I hear a lot of you asking, but what about reality? I know I'm the creator. I know I have to hold the state that I want. I know I have to believe and know deeply that what I want is mine. But what happens when it actually isn't mine? How do I tell myself I'm healthy when I don't feel healthy, when I feel sick, when I see the reality and feel the reality of my illness, no matter how hard I try to hold on to the thoughts that I can heal, that I will heal. How do I create my own miracle? How do I create what it is that I want when reality is reflecting back something much, much different? How do I harness my own power? How do I believe that God and I are one? How do I align mind, body, heart, and soul? How do I take and harness my God power inside me in order to actually create what it is that I want when the reality reflects something much, much different? So if you are interested in this topic, please give it a like, consider subscribing. My name is Lisa with Lisa Hill Yourself. And I know many of you out there are struggling with this form of cognitive dissonance, right? You are telling your mind something, but the reality is reflecting back something different. And you are saying affirmations, but you are not able to trick your mind or you're not able to actually believe them because the reality is not reflecting back this truth. So if you are struggling with this, like I was for so many years, then I want to try to bring clarity to this topic today. If you are struggling to know how to create in the face of a reality that isn't shifting or moving, because this is a very confusing topic for a lot of people and it really trips us up. It keeps us stuck. And it was something that eluded me for so long in my healing journey. So I wanna explain here in this video the wisdom that I've learned about this and share it with you in hopes that you can begin to grasp what I'm saying so that you can truly begin to change, to take your control back, to use your God-given power to heal yourself. Because like I said, this isn't magic. Miracles aren't magic. They do require a belief, a knowing, but that knowing and that belief is often not accessible or available to us depending on what stage we're at in our healing journey. So you are a piece of God. If you are looking at this from a new age perspective, it is the source of everything, the source or the universe. You don't have to believe in God. This is not about religion. So you can substitute any word you want in here. You are a piece of God. You are a piece of the divine. You are a piece of source. You are, you have a spiritual aspect to yourself that is a piece of the entire puzzle, which makes up part of the wholeness which makes up the source, which makes up God, which makes up the universe. You've been given a body in which to live. You've been given a human body in which to live. Your soul is residing inside this human body and we live here on earth. So we must follow the natural laws of the earthly universe, right? We cannot create miracles that aren't possible only miracles that work within the confines of the natural laws of the universe, of what is possible within the context of these natural laws. For example, you cannot bring someone back from the dead. You cannot lift up a building with your pinky finger. So there are things that are just impossible to do within the, the given laws of the universe that we live in. We're working with the law of gravity. We're working with the law of relativity. We're working with the law of opposites. We're working with all these different laws, these metaphysical laws, and even mathematical laws of the scientific universe. But aside from those limitations, anything is possible. We can create anything. We can create our life. We can create our identity. We can create our story. We can recreate our past. We can, we can create a fully new past. We can create a completely different future. We can create anything that we want within the bounds of the metaphysical laws of the universe. If it is possible for someone, it is available to you. 
if somebody has ever done it, has ever manifested it, has ever healed it, has ever changed it, has ever overcome it, right? Has ever received it, then it is available for you. It is available for you too. If it is available to somebody, if it can happen, if it is within the laws of this universe, even if you don't see any possible way that it could happen for you, the possibility exists. And because the possibility exists, it's available to all of us, no matter your age, no matter your past, no matter your history, no matter how deep your experience is, how different or how unique, no matter how long something has been going on or how unlikely it is or how impossible it seems, it is absolutely 100% possible. And that is why I know healing is possible and you can heal yourself. You absolutely can heal if you are struggling with any kind of chronic illness, diagnosis, symptoms. If somebody has ever, ever overcome it, cured it, healed, if it has ever been done, then it is available for you too. And I don't care what the circumstances are, what your personal story is surrounding this. Miracles are created, they are not granted. Miracles are created by you, by your power, by your belief, and by your knowing, by your actions, by your beliefs, by your emotions, by your thoughts. It is all you. And this can be tough, very, very tough for many of us to swallow. It is a tough pill to swallow that we are not only in full control, we are completely and 100% responsible for not only where we're at in our life, but for undoing where we're at in our life, for making the changes necessary in order to get what it is that we want, to receive what it is that we want. And so taking 100% responsibility is very, very difficult for all of us. It was especially difficult for me because I lived in a victim mentality state for years. I truly believed that this happened to me, that I was a victim of what happened to me, that I had tried everything, that I had done everything, that I was doing all the work, the physical work, the emotional work, the spiritual work, the mental work. I was doing all of it and nothing was shifting, nothing was changing. I was praying, I was working, I was trying to create, I was trying to believe, and nothing was changing. I thought God hated me. I thought I was alone. I thought there were no possibilities, but none of it was true. And the first step is realizing that you need to take your power back, that you have the power, that you are the operant power of your own life, that only you think, that only you feel that only you take action, that only you are living in there. You are the only one inside there. You are God. It's the, you are the only one in there. You are the God of your own universe, of your own life. Nothing outside of you can fix this. Nothing outside of you can change this. Nothing outside of you can make you think different thoughts or take different actions or feel different emotions. You are the only one in there. You are the only one that can do it. And this is a tough pill to swallow, particularly if you are a victim, if something bad did happen to you, right? You didn't create this bad thing that happened to you. You didn't make it up. You didn't choose to have this. You didn't choose to feel this way. I'm not blaming you. There is no blame or guilt. You aren't to blame. You probably are a victim. You probably did have bad cards dealt to you. You probably do have a unique story that makes you different than everybody else. You probably are doing all the work, doing all the thoughts, doing as much as you can, doing your best. All of this may be exactly true. And yet the fact remains, you are the only person in there you're the only one that has full control over what you're thinking, doing, feeling, how you're acting, what you're believing. Only you can make the changes 
and only you can call your power back to yourself and use it. You are the only one who can do this. No matter how you got to where you are, there is no blame or shame or guilt. In fact, I have the utmost compassion for you because when I hear your stories, just like mine, they are tragic, right? You are trying. But if you don't believe that you can change, if you don't believe that you can heal, if you don't believe that it's available to you, then how can you actually get there? How can you get there if you don't even believe it? How can you achieve it? And I'm sorry, I know the waves are distracting. I have ordered my outdoor microphone for my walks. I'm hoping it will come in the next few days for future videos, but let's just keep moving with this regardless of the sound of the waves. Okay, you may be saying, okay, I hear you. I'm in, I, I am on board with this messaging. I know I create my reality. I know I am the creator of my life. I believe you, I'm there with you. I get it. I understand the messaging. I understand the power of God that lives inside me. I understand that I'm connected to source, connected to the universe. I resonate with the teachings of Neville Goddard and the law of assumption. But how do I assume this? How do I tell myself this, uh, that I'm worthy of this miracle, that this is coming to me when it's not in reality and my brain keeps screaming at me, this isn't true, right? You're sick. How do I tell myself I'm healed when my body and my brain keeps yelling at me, no, you are not. This is a concept that takes a while to get. This concept I was stuck on for so long, even though I believed, even though I knew the teachings, even though I was aware, I still was very, very tripped up on this. First, you need to know that if your mind is saying, no, you're not, no, you're not, no, you're not worthy for this miracle. No, you can't heal, right? No, you aren't healed. No, you can't heal. No, you're not gonna heal. You're not gonna be successful. You can't overcome this. If this is what your mind is screaming at you and you are believing it, you are believing your mind, you are having a hard time, then you are spending your time fighting yourself. You are fighting with yourself, which means you are fighting with God, which means you are fighting with source. You are fighting with the universe. You are fighting with the wholeness of all that is. If you have one part of you wanting something, your desire is so strong, I wanna be healed, and your mind is saying you can never heal. You have two parts that are at odds. Right there, this means that you are not in alignment. So if the first thing you need to do, the first step that you need to take is to become aware, is to realize, oh, I have two parts of me saying different things. I have my heart or I have my soul saying I can do this, and I have my mind saying I can't. And you need to know that what's actually happening here is that if you feel like you are in this cognitive dis dissonance or emotional dissonance, right? One part and the other part are not in alignment. That is telling you what your problem is. Your problem is that you are out of alignment. You are not in alignment. You have to be in alignment, mind, heart, body, and soul in order to work from your true power, right? In order to use your power, in order to heal, in order to get the miracle. So if even one part of you is telling you, you can't have the miracle, you don't deserve the miracle, it's not working, right? Then you know you're not in alignment. And so this is all about getting aware with yourself. What part of you doesn't believe it? What part of you is out of alignment? Is it your mind? Is your mind screaming at you? No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you can't never heal, right? Is it this cognitive dissonance you're having? Is it through your mind, right? Your soul is telling you what you want, but your mind is saying something different? Or is it your emotions? You're saying, I'm happy. You're saying, I, I want happiness. I want joy. And your feelings are giving you sadness and grief or anger and despair or hopelessness? Are your emotions in dissonance, right? Are your emotions not in alignment with what your soul, right? Is your mind saying, maybe your mind is saying, I am healed, I want this. And your emotions are saying, no, 
No, they're not. Maybe it's your bodily sensations. Your mind is saying, I can have this, I can have this. And your bodily sensations are saying, no, you can't, right? So what is out of alignment? What is in alignment and what is out of alignment? You need to bring your mind, your heart, your body all into alignment with what it is on a deep soul level from your higher self, your true, true desire. Your soul knows what it wants. What does it want? Do you deeply at a soul level want to heal? What part of your living being is out of alignment with what your soul wants because your soul is driving the show. But if your mind's out of alignment with it, or if your body is out of alignment with it, or if your heart, like your emotional state, is out of alignment with it, you cannot have it. Not because you don't want it, part of you does, but not all of you. Some part of you, and here's the key word that I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna do a separate video just on this word because it is so important. Part of you is out of alignment. Why? Because part of you is in resistance. Part of you is in resistance to what your soul wants. Because if there wasn't a part of you on some level resisting it, then you would be fully in alignment and you could create it. You would create it. When nothing is resisting your deepest soul desire, then it can happen for you. And if you are saying, that's not true, but that's not true, I this, I that, think about that. That is a resistant thought. You're in resistance to even the thought of it. If you are already saying, yes, but this, yes, but I, that means your mind is in resistance to it. If you're already saying, yeah, but I this, and yeah, but I that, you are already in resistance. Your mind is in total resistance to allowing this to happen, to getting into alignment with what it is that you want. And so step one, becoming aware that you're out of alignment. I want to be healed. I want this more than anything in the world. This is what I desire more than anything and I'm trying as hard as I can. But I hear my voice saying something different or I hear my emotions feeling something different, feeling a different way or my body is sending me different messages. I am out of alignment. It is the awareness to notice that you are not in alignment, mind, body, body heart and soul. And when you notice this, step two, where and what am I resisting? What am I still resisting? Where am I in resistance? Am I in resistance to this mentally? Am I in resistance to this emotionally? Am I in resistance to this physically? Am I in resistance? Where is the resistance? And why am I resisting this? That is step three and it is the most important and the hardest and most difficult part because it means looking inside. It means feeling and thinking the things that we've been trying to push away. It means not pushing down or ignoring these voices or these feelings or these emotions. That's the part that I want you to understand. At this point, you turn toward your resistances. You turn toward your feelings. You turn toward your emotions. You turn towards those thoughts. You stop trying to fight with reality, with what is, with the evidence, right? Your body is just showing you what is. Your emotions are showing you what is. Your mind is screaming to you what is. And so I'm not telling you this is your desire. Force everything to get into alignment with your desire. Force it into alignment. Force your mind to get into alignment. Force your heart to get into alignment, right? Force it, force it all into alignment. No, you cannot force something into alignment. Those places, the parts of you have to come willingly into alignment. Something is resisting them from getting into alignment. Something is resisting them and that something is you. You are resisting yourself from getting into full alignment because you haven't fully looked at what is. You haven't fully heard those emotions. You haven't fully 
fully felt those emotions. You haven't fully sat with those thoughts. You haven't gone all the way with them. You haven't really allowed them to speak, to be seen, to be heard, to be felt, to be witnessed. You haven't allowed them to, to move, to release, right? You haven't allowed them because you can't release emotions or thoughts until you actually feel them and hear them and see them clearly. And you have survival instincts. Your body, your subconscious brain won't allow you to get into alignment because it is trying to protect you. It is trying to protect you. It doesn't want whatever happened to happen again. It doesn't want you to forget. It wants to hold on to these memories. It wants to hold on to these thoughts. It wants to protect you at all costs so that you don't get sicker, so that this doesn't happen to you again, right? Your body, your subconscious, which is all the experiences that has happened to you over your lifetime is being held underneath the surface. And your beliefs are formed because of these experiences in the past. And you are in resistance to letting go of them because you are afraid at a subconscious level that if you do, then you will get hurt worse. Then you won't remember, that you won't protect yourself enough, right? So you're holding on to fear, you're holding on to anger, you're holding on to emotions, you're holding on to things underneath the surface. Your subconscious mind is holding on to these things underneath the surface as a way to protect you. You are in resistance to letting them go because you're scared you're not safe. And no amount of desire from your soul can convince you, can convince your biology to stop resisting something that it thinks is not safe. It wants you to remember, it wants you to store this. It wants you to protect yourself in all future, future situations that are similar so that you survive. This is survival instinct. And so looking inside deeply and trying to find out what it is that you're in resistance to takes work. And it is scary because you have to think all those thoughts and you have to feel all those emotions and you have to sit in the mess that is you, the mess of your subconscious thoughts as they rise to the surface, right? The mess that you've made in there throughout your life by holding on to these experiences and applying meaning to them, giving them meaning, and then interpreting that in certain ways so that you create oh, an entire identity around it, an entire world view around it, uh, a, a top to bottom belief system that is deeply embedded. But here's the thing, you are none of those things. You are not your body, you are not your mind. You are not your emotions. You are not any of these things. You are the soul. This is just the story, the identity, the worldview that you've created for yourself based on all your past experiences. You've created these beliefs because you've given all the experiences certain meanings and you've created an entire identity for yourself, which we call the ego but it is not true. You've made it up based on your experiences. You've made it up. You've constructed it because of the meaning that you gave the events or the experiences that you had. And if you've created it, you can undo it. You can uncreate this whole identity of yours. You can uncreate and create a new worldview. You can create a new personality, you can create a new identity, you can create and change your beliefs, you can create new beliefs. But we can't do that without changing the meaning that we've given to our past experiences, because they keep coming up. And that's why we feel like we're in dissonance with ourselves. The past keeps coming up. And we haven't given that past a different meaning. We haven't changed it. So it keeps coming up to haunt us in the present and to tell us, no, we can't because we have underlying deep beliefs and deep meanings from past experiences that make us feel, just feel 
like we can never heal or like we cannot change this thing. And so we actually can't just tell ourselves to get in line or tell our mind to believe it because the subconscious is trying to keep you safe. It's protecting you underneath that. And it thinks the way it protects you is by keeping you safe, by creating this world of you, these identities, these beliefs that keep you small, that keep you safe, that keep you stuck, right? So that you never experience a similar situation that you did in the past, so that you can handle it differently this time. And you can't untangle that without allowing yourself to feel it fully, and then to go back in the past and change what happened change your memory of it, change your beliefs, change what you choose, what meaning you choose to give it. And until you do that, you will feel like you are fighting with yourself. You will feel like you are out of alignment with yourself because you're not listening to your deepest thoughts, your deepest emotions, your deepest meanings, right? Your deepest worldviews, your deepest beliefs. You're not hearing them and you're not changing them and if you don't change your beliefs if you don't change the meaning that you gave the experiences that you had and choose a new belief choose to see it differently then you're always going to feel like you are in resistance to yourself you're always going to feel like you're fighting yourself you aren't going to feel like you are in true alignment mind heart, heart body and soul and until you are you're not in your power because your power comes from the soul. Your power comes from the peace of God. Your power comes from the fact that you are not your body, not your mind, not your emotions, not your heart. You are none of those things. You are more than that. You are connected to all that is. And if you can't believe it, if you can't tell yourself that and actually believe it, because you have part of yourself that is screaming at you either through physical symptoms or emotional, overwhelming emotional feelings or your mind screaming at you in looping thoughts, then it is because you haven't gone deep enough, back far enough, sat with these feelings long enough, interpreted the meanings of where they happened in different ways and changed those beliefs, decided to change a deep belief about yourself. You can't go from believing I can never heal to I can totally heal. I've got this, I can heal without changing the belief that's underneath it. Because the truth is you can heal. But why are you in resistance to believing that? What happened to you? What are you believing? What are the thoughts getting in the way of believing that? What are the emotions getting in the way of believing that? What needs to be felt or heard or loved? What needs to be loved? What needs to be soothed? What needs compassion? What needs kindness? How can you give what has happened to you, those experiences, a new meaning? A meaning which changes your belief about yourself and the world. It has to change you at a fundamental level for the better. The new beliefs that you want to instill has to, they have to be loving. They have to be kind. They have to be compassionate. They have to change your worldview for the better. And I have lots of videos about change. I have lots of videos about your underlying beliefs and how to change them. This doesn't happen overnight. And that's why miracles aren't usually instant why so many people struggle with this. So that's why all healing happens on the inside. Even if you're struggling with something that is purely physical, the change happens inside of you. The change happens on the inside. And you can't force yourself to believe something you don't. You can't fake it if you don't believe it. You can't trick your mind to believe something that you don't or force it into it or bully it into it or Ignore the part of you that is telling you, but I really don't believe this. You have to look at the part that is saying, I really don't believe this. And you have to find out why. Why is that part there? How can you change that part of you? How can you change deeply that internal part of you that doesn't believe that this can be true for you? 
What is it protecting? Why is it there? What happened? What didn't you receive in that moment that you needed, that you're still trying to protect from? Do you need more self-love, more self-compassion, more resources or belief in yourself or resiliency or skills or what is it that you need? And usually the answer is always love. You need love, you need forgiveness, you need kindness from yourself. You need to know that you are safe, right? You need to remind yourself how safe you are, that you can take care of yourself, that you won't abandon yourself, that you won't leave yourself, that you are there for yourself unconditionally and no matter what. So if you want something, if you desire something so badly and a part of you is not in alignment with it, you can't ignore that part. You can't try to fix or bully that part or force that part. You have to hear that part. You have to feel that part. You have to turn toward that part. You have to give that part of you what it needs, what it needs to feel safe, what it needs to feel loved, what it needs to feel secure, what it needs to be able to believe. You need to give that part whatever it needs to feel safe and loved and secure and until that part feels safe and it knows deeply that it's worthy and that you can have this. And then it starts to truly believe this. Then it can come back into alignment with you. So I also have many videos on uh, parts work on this channel, which is a really important piece of deep inner healing work. Inner healing work is not for the faint of heart. This is where we change. This is where we grow. This is where we evolve. And there are many tools and techniques to get us there when it comes to inner healing work. And in fact, one entire part of my program is focused on inner healing work, right? A two to three month chunk of my program focuses on all the ways to heal yourself internally. Because you can't come back into wholeness. You can't come into alignment unless you heal and come back into wholeness on the inside right? Unless you heal from your trauma, unless you heal from your experiences, from your beliefs, from what you're telling yourself. This is why change happens on the inside and inner work is so important. And it's not an overnight process. For some people, it is enough to just say, I am the creator. I know I create my life and to be able to bring themselves into alignment. But a lot of people are tripped up with the mind and with the emotions. And if you are one of them, if you are the one that is tripped up over your emotions and your thoughts, and you can't just bring yourself into alignment, no matter how much you know in the concept and believe in the concept that you are creating your own reality, then that just means that you have a longer journey than some, that you have more work to do, that you need to look inside your mind, that you need to look and do the inner work on your emotions, right? You need a little bit more work in those areas to feel like you can come back into alignment, to feel whole, to heal in those areas, to change beliefs, right? To heal what's broken, to love what's still hurting. You need a little more work in these areas. And so instead of just forcing your way through, trying to make yourself believe something that you actually really don't, you need to go in and find out why you don't. What is stopping you? Where are you in resistance to actually believing that? And then do the work there. Do the work on changing this part of yourself that needs changing in some way. It needs love. It needs to come back into alignment, come back into wholeness. This part needs to be heard or it needs to be loved or it needs to see it differently, apply a different meaning. You need to do work in the area of what you are resisting most. And so that doesn't mean that this work doesn't work for you. That doesn't mean that you can't create what it is that you want or manifest it and that you're not powerful because you are all of those things. It just means you can't access it yet because you have some more work to do. You have some more inner work to do. You have some more mindset work to do. It hasn't fully cl clicked because you are still in resistance somewhere. You are still resisting for some reason and you need to discover what that reason is so that you can challenge it, so that you can prove to that part of yourself 
that it doesn't need to be in resistance any longer. And so I really truly hope that you understand and hear and get the message of this video because I am not telling you to bypass anything that's there. I'm not telling you to pretend or ignore. I am simply reminding you that you are the creator of your own life. You are the only person who can create it. And if you are not creating it and you have a strong desire to create it, then it is simply because you are in resistance somewhere in some part of you that still needs a little more work in order to get there and align up so that you can use your full power, so that you can step into your full power, and so that you can deeply know and believe that you create your reality and you can create whatever it is that you want. And so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share your comments below. I am interested to see what you think. Go watch this video over here on changing your beliefs. And if you're interested in working with me, you can check the links in the description box below. I wanna thank you for spending your time with me today. I am sending you all love and healing, and I will see you in the next video.